Hello everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. Today I am taking you through Antique Farmhouse. If you all have not visited this website, get ready to go down the rabbit hole. Their decor is absolutely stunning. It's high end and it is definitely my style. But today I wanted to show you how to take some thrifted items, even some Dollar Tree items, and dupe some of the things that I found here that caught my eye. First off, we are gonna go in with these books. Now, I did not realize they were boxes, but I do have a video showing you how to create boxes with books, so I will leave that linked um, up above right here and in the description box. So I found these books for 50 cents at a garage sale this last summer. If you are new to my channel, I love vintage books, so I would never ever harm a vintage books, but these books were good to go. So I am taking some leftover white linen from the JRV Cottage Colors. And I ended up, after the second coat, I was like, this is not working. It's not giving me the coverage that I want and it looks kind of streaky. So I decided to go in with White Swan, um, which is my clay base paint. And there is a reason why it's so pigmented and it gives you so much full coverage because all I needed was one coat and I was good to go. But isn't it crazy, y'all? Look at the difference. The white linen is like a stark white and then you see the white swan. And I was like, I thought white swan was like stark white, but it is not. So I am going to stipple our white swan on. I am someone that does not like brush strokes. So this is my way of ensuring that I do not get any in my paint finish. Don't forget as well, when you are doing books, to do the inside lip of that book as well, because it will show. Now that we're done, I'm gonna take China Blue, China Stone, no, China Blue, and we're gonna dip into the Birds and Bees stamp. Now, I don't have these in stock right now, you guys, but I did order them and they should be coming by the end of the week. So, in our dupe books, each book had a different pattern on them, and one of them, were birds. So these are much larger than the birds that are on our dupe ones, but we're going to make it work. So whatever I do on the front side of the book, I am just going to mimic on the back side of the book and just go back and forth, but I will not, you know, show you that, but mm, look at that detail. Oh my gosh. The stamps are worth the investment, y'all. They're going to last you forever. So we're going to go in with a second bird. Now I love this stamp set because I love the, the like branches on these because I can use them in multiple ways. So for this book, I needed to fill all of that blank space. So I just got the branches and like the little leaves from this one stamp that I used on the bottom and I am gonna continue to fill the book up. Now, just like the dupe, we need to pay attention to that inside lip. It's all about the details. So I am going to grab that same stamp and I'm gonna start stamping on the inside lip. It is like, for me, I love the little details like this and I personally pay attention to them. So that's why I wanted to make sure that we carried that aspect of the dupe into our books. And of course, we can't forget our binding. You could put lettering on this if you want. I decided to just go with the stamp that we were using. Um, for our second book, we are going to use rural, rural <laughs> scenes. Um, this is not something that I have in stock. If you guys are interested in it, let me know and I could definitely add it to my next order. Um, this almost exactly matches the, the dupe book. So all I'm going to do is grab different aspects of this stamp. It comes with two sheets and I'm just going to fill this book up. You could see there's people on there, a windmill trees. I'm going to put some animals. And then, of course, whatever I did to the front, I did to the back. 
And then I also made sure to get the spine of the book as well. I do clear these with clear wax by DIY, but I did them in bulk, like all the DIYs at once, so you won't see it until the end. But this is how beautiful these turned out, you guys. I love, love, love these. I even thought about painting the pages gold, but I stopped myself. I was like, you're doing too much, girl. But I love how these turned out. And again, I did not realize when I found them that they were boxes, but I have created like the little boxes out of books before. So I will leave that in the description box if you actually want to turn them into um, boxes. And this is what the dupe looks like on the bottom right for $39. And we created two out of the three for $3, which I think is an absolute still. And I think that they turned out gorgeous. <laughs> okay. This one, you guys, this dupe, I saw this and I was like, no way. $34 for this. I found the exact, almost the exact same one at the thrift store. This baby was $2.99. And I was like, this is so outdated. I'm going to probably take it apart and do something different. And then I saw that and I was like, <laughs> Maybe it's not outdated after all. So we just have to fix this with some paint, to be honest. It was very grungy and yellow. And I wanted to bring that bright white back that we saw in the dupe image. So I am taking that JRV cottage color in linen white. This has a built-in sealer. So I was trying to take out an additional step if I was able to. So I painted the entire box with two coats of the white linen, the front and the back. Now to get that rust um, feature back, I am going to dip into liquid patina. This is also a product where I'm not going to have to clear it with big top or wax. It is almost like a top coat. So all I'm going to do is dab this on and it was very easy because the little rust spots from before were almost kind of like engraved in. So I had a nice guide for that. As I'm putting that dark and decrepit liquid patina on, I'm going to get a paper towel and just dab it back so it didn't look like I was painting it on. And liquid patina dries very fast. So you want to make sure that you're working in sections and that you're wiping back as you are painting it on. Once I was done with that, I wanted the backside to look similar. It, in the original box, it wasn't really like rusted like the front is, but I like some cohesiveness. So I just added some random little rust spots to the back. And again, I did not have to put any clear coat on this. So again, here is how it turned out. I can't, you know, the things that we think are outdated, <laughs> I guess they come back. I could not believe that I saw this for $34 on Antique Farmhouse. I was shook. So we just updated it with some paint, brought it back to life. And then showing you the side-by-side -side of this, you guys, $3, $3. And theirs is 34 bucks. Yes. I just wanted to remind you guys, if you are interested in any of today's products, I do have a website. I always keep that link down in the description box for you. I sell DIY paints, decoupage papers, IOD, thrifted funds. I got a little bit of everything for everyone on this website. All right, getting into our next dupe. I found these faux flowers uh, for $39. Oh my gosh, did you hear my voice crack? That's how shocked I was. So you guys, I mean, our Dollar Tree fans, you, you know these, you probably have them in your stash. Well, I only had three, so I couldn't do four. But these little, the lettering on these, you can just take a razor blade and scratch these off. I wanted to make sure I did this because one, I didn't want to have to do multiple coats over this black to try and cover it up. 
And two, it's kind of like whatever this is, a sticker, a laminate, it like lines around the lettering and it would have shown through my paint. So I scraped all of them off and then I'm going to grab crinoline. And crinoline, for those of you that use Waverly, is compared to like cashew, except it doesn't have that crazy yellow undertone to it. It is just a soft, creamy, beautiful white. Um, so I'm gonna do my messy coat as usual. I even painted the inside of these as well. For our second coat, y'all know the drill. I'm gonna be stippling that paint on to get rid of all of those brush strokes. Now, to get the rust spots on these, we are gonna go in with layered chocolate, which is a yummy deep brown. And I'm gonna start off on the bottom. Now, in the dupe photo, these rust little spots, almost like enamel, um, these were not like orange or, or like that kind of rusty. They were a dark brown. So I am just taking this little detailed brush. You guys could get these at Dollar Tree. And I am just going lightly over the curves, trying to keep in theme with how the dupe looked. I'm going to go up on the top of the picture. And then I'm also going to make sure to get the inside little rim of that. And I'm gonna let that brush kind of, it's the right word, maybe like feather out because the little wispies almost make it look like the rust is spreading through the pitcher. Are you guys picking up on what I'm putting down? And just a tip, start your rust spots from the bottom. And I mean like under the item and paint upwards that way it looks more realistic you know like if a pitcher was sitting on water how that rust is going to eat it from the bottom upwards yeah you guys get what i'm saying all right and because i cannot stand when i buy pitchers and planters from the thrift store and they have foam glued in them i decided to take these dollar tree florals and just set them in the pitchers I'm going to try to sell them like that on my website. And then if they don't sell on the website, I will have to glue foam in there in order to sell them on, um, in my booth. Cause I feel like if I don't like actually stick them in foam and put them in my booth, people are going to think like, why are these flowers just falling out? But I like people to have the option to do different things with them. Like somebody might want to use one of these to put pins on their desk or use them for coffee stir sticks or whatever it is. I want people to have options instead of making such a permanent <laughs> decision, okay? All right, so after that, you guys, I did clear them with clear wax. I personally love them matte. I did not want them in the glossy finish like the dupe photo, so my bad. But these turned out so good. I tried to keep in with the theme of the colors of the florals that they used in their image, but these actually turned out to be one of my favorites. And here is a side-by-side. -side. We spent about six bucks on these, including the florals, and our dupe was $39. Now this one is gorgeous, and it's a galvanized black pitcher vase for 29 bucks and we are gonna dupe it for hardly anything and it's gonna be so easy. So this was $3.99 and I'm almost positive I got it 50% off. And I am gonna go in with black velvet. So black velvet is almost gonna be like a, I don't know why my voice is cracking so much, charcoal black color. In the dupe photo, it was not a stark, bright black. It was definitely looked almost like faded, tarnished. So that is why I chose to use the black velvet. We do have like a black black, which is little black dress, but this one was definitely a dupe for our photo. So after I did my usual messy coat, I'm also going to do the inside lip of this picture as well. 
And then you all know the drill by now, we are going to stipple that second layer on, making sure that we get full coverage over the galvanized metal and our brush strokes. Now I finished all of the projects off with DIY clear wax. I loved the matte look on the three projects that we use the clay base paint on. So I wanted to keep it that way. So I decided to use the DIY clear wax. If you do want a glossier looking finish, you would use Big Top. But you guys, this looks so good. I just stuck some uh, fern picks from Dollar Tree in this picture. I am so surprised I don't decorate more with black because this just looks so sleek. Like the, the bright greenery the against the white. I love this. And we spent with the greenery about six bucks on this. And the dupe from Antique Farmhouse was 29. So y'all, if you want to see more of these dupes, please make sure to leave your girl a comment down in the description box and subscribe. Thank you all for being a part of my day and a part of my channel. I absolutely appreciate you all. Bye.